pocket with wise men shall be wise, but the companion of fools shall be destroyed. I'm speaking on the subject, vision enhancers. And the objective is to understand the forces that will enhance our vision. They are vision amplifiers, vision multipliers, vision boosters, vision strengtheners. Vision is a spiritual force that can be, that can be enhanced by certain actions or forces and can also be destroyed by certain actions or forces. Today we shall be looking at those forces or actions that will enhance our vision. It's a testimony thanksgiving service at the end of it. We'll still do the testimonies and the thanksgiving. But we'll look at this. If we see the forces that enhance vision, the opposite of those forces will destroy vision. What are the things that will, that will enhance your vision? Number one, associating correctly with people of vision. Associating correctly with people of vision. Associating correctly with people of vision. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise. The companion of fools shall be destroyed. He that walketh with people of vision shall have vision. But visionless people will only see destruction. Please understand that your associations affect your vision. I'd like you to know the following that I have mentioned before in time past about your association or your company. First, your company affects your mindset. Second, your company, who you company with, affects your thought process. Third, your company affects your choices. It affects your mindset. It affects your thought process. It affects your choices. Fourth, your company, who is your friend, affects the way your, your mind is, affects the way how you think, affects the choices you make, your company affects eventually your habit. People begin to have similar habits of life with people that are their friends. Eventually, fifthly, your company affects your lifestyle. And, now, and ultimately, your company affects your outcome in life. So it's your mindset, your thought process, your choices or decision making, your habit, your lifestyle, your outcome. No wonder. People begin to think like who they walk with. You think like them. You talk like them. You act like them. Consciously or unconsciously. You begin to think like them. You begin to talk like them. You begin to act like them. You begin to see things the way they see things. That is why a man and his wife, most times, they think alike, talk alike, act alike, 
crack similar jokes. I've seen people tell my wife before. They say, you are, now, you are talking like your husband now. Very, very important. There are people who begin to hate somebody that they have no business hating because their friend hates the person. <laughs> Did you hear that bomb? Many of you are victims of such. Somebody you never offended is hating you because his friend told him to hate you. That is the power of company. You are not interested in your future until you are careful about your friends. You are not interested in your future until you are careful about who your friends are. You are not interested in your future until you are careful about who your friends are. If your friends think big, you think big. If they think possibility, you think possibility. If they think revolution, you think revolution. On the other hand, if they think small, you think small. If they think scarcity, you think scarcity. If they think limitation, you think limitation. Remember what happened to David when he came to the field and he saw Goliath and he was thinking of taking Goliath down. And his brother Eliab, who was a defeated, limited person, thought otherwise. And David said, what is my business with you? If you can't see reason, I see reason. What have I now done? Is there not a cause? I think that's First Samuel chapter 17, verse 30 there about. Is there not a cause? He turned away from him. If I hang around you earlier, you would destroy my vision. My vision is to pull down Goliath. And David said, what have I now done? Is there not a cause? Verse 30. And he turned from him. Look at your neighbor. Say there are people you need to turn from. Ay, 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 ay. And he turned from him and went to another person. Those who can't see what you see. Those who can't think how you think. Those who think you are too ambitious for thinking the way you are thinking. Those who think you are too arrogant for imagining what you are imagining are people you need to turn from. People who think you are too small to contemplate what you are contemplating. There are people you need to turn from. You need a turn in order to see a turn around. Sometimes you need, you need to make a turn in order to see a turn around. Many people are too, they are too, they are too sentimental about their associations. So nothing changes. They are too addicted to certain personalities, so nothing changes. You have, you have a, 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 a 50 foot vision and you share it with them and they reduce it to five inches. They say, no, 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 people in our generation don't do that. No, 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 you are thinking too big. Don't you know you are in Nigeria? Don't you know you are in Nigeria? Don't you know where you are? And who says that I am limited because I'm in Nigeria? The Bible didn't say my God shall supply all my needs according to the banks of Nigeria. He said my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. Somebody say amen. Somebody said the Lord told her to build something, something, something. Something big to care for people. But she's wondering where the money will come from. But the Lord helped her to build her house. A duplex with millions. So I said, if the Lord told you 
and it's the Lord who told you to build what you are saying he asked you to build. The Lord is not asking for your money. The budget of, the, the project of God carries the budget of God. God's budget, God's project is in his budget. I said, see how you built your own house. You say God helped you to build your own house. It wasn't his own, it's your own, but he helped you to build it. How much more will he build the one that is his own? <laughs> is God speaking to somebody here at all? I like you to watch your association. See, you don't hate people. You love all people. If you hate people, you are not a Christian. You won't, you won't know the way to heaven. If you hate people, you won't know it. If you hate people in the same manner, don't love anybody enough to give your ears and your heart to them. If what they say and see is contrary to your life's vision. Love them. Greet them. Relate with them from a distance. But know who you are. Know where you are going. And know what you stand for. Somebody say a loud amen. amen. If you associate correctly with people of vision. They will sharpen your vision. They will provoke you. They will challenge you. If you associate negatively with people without vision, they kill your vision. And you won't have them to blame. You have just yourself to blame. But that will never be your portion. In the name of Jesus. What is the enhancement of vision number one? Associating correctly with people of vision. Number two, connecting inspiration from people with proven results. Proven results of their, of their vision. Connecting inspiration from people with proven results. Proven results of their vision. Talking about mentors. Role models, fathers, mentors, role models, fathers, they give us the opportunity to know how to think. They give us the opportunity to know what to think. They give us the opportunity to know how to dream and envision. Did you hear what I said? Mentors, role models, fathers. They give us the opportunity to know how to think first. What to think next. How to think, what to think. Third. What to dream and envision. How to dream and envision. By watching them. And fourthly, they give us the opportunity to know what to dare. What to dare. What to, what to attempt. Mentors. Role models. Opportunity to know how to think. Opportunity to know what to think. Opportunity to know what to dream and envision. Opportunity to know what to dare. What to dare. Two things to note. First, their reality shows us our possibilities. When you see a man, a woman with proven results, what is their reality shows you your possibility. Possibilities. Their manifestations fertilizes our vision. What is their manifestation becomes a fertilization 
for your vision. Because you were previously thinking that what you are imagining was impossible. Or that what God told you you can accomplish was impossible. Until you saw somebody did bigger than that. Some time ago, a man came from Southern Africa, pastor, has a TV station and so on. This glory door was in construction. And he came around and moved. He said, I thought I was doing something. And I was almost getting tired on the road. He said, this that I have seen now has enlarged my vision, strengthened my vision, and has told me that if this is possible here, then the, what little thing, I think he was doing 12,000 seat auditorium. He said, that little thing I am doing is doable. The manifestations fertilize your vision. They irrigate your vision. They water it. Somebody say amen. Eaglets learn how to fly and sour in the air by watching mother eagles adventure in the sky. They watch it. And suddenly, the eaglet is flying. The eaglet is soaring. It catches the vision of what the mother eagle is doing. And is able to do likewise. Children reproduce their parents' actions and behavior by watching them. And there are some they act out unconsciously. Am I communicating at all? Am I communicating? Somebody say amen. Somebody say louder amen. Even though there are some that are in the gyms, but there are some they just watch you and they just act on act naturally. The reason why many people cannot amount to so much in life is because they despise the place of a mentor, the place of role models, the place of a spiritual father. The father is a ladder. The father is a feather. It gives you the capacity to climb. I believe it was Isaac Newton who said, if I have seen any father, it is by standing on the shoulders of those who have gone ahead of me. We live in a generation that have no value for fathers, no value for mentors, no value for role models. So results are just tiny, 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 tiny. Elisha confronted the river Jordan the same way that his, he saw his father Elijah do, the mantle. He raised the dead the same way. Peter raised the dead the same way his master Jesus raised the dead. Catherine Kuhlman's influence on Benihim is notable. Benihim observed that woman for a long time. Served in, 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 in the choir of Catherine Kuhlman's revivals. William Braham's influence on T.L. Osborne. Legendary. For me, T.L. Osborne, Kenneth Copeland, T.L. Osborne and Daisy Osborne, Kenneth Copeland and Gloria Copeland, Charles and Frances Hunter. I saw their marriage affair before I ever got married. And I saw the relationship between a man and his wife and how they can function in harmony and in ministry. And I looked at it. It fertilized my vision. And I stepped out in that same manner, receiving the grace of God and help. One pastor was in my office the other, last Friday. He says, sir, I want to tell you that since we submitted under your leadership, everything has changed. Ministry is sweatless. Everything is changed. He said, but especially my family, my home. He said, I used to be very rugged. 
I used to be, he used to be like a lion in the house. He said, but when I watch, watch how you relate with your wife and relate with your children, he said, everything changed. I said, madam, is it true? He said, it is so true. He used to scream. He used to shout. He used to, I mean, he was literal, a literal lion in the house. You play your role at your best if you can connect with your role model at your best it takes it takes humility to 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 admit that you need help and that you need mercy to do the right things it takes humility Watching the building of the fake tabernacle in Lagos. Watching it overflow. Made it clear to me that what God was saying to me concerning building a sanctuary such as this was possible. And it became possible. If connecting with inspiration from people with proven results enhances vision. Having no connection with anybody with proven results or despising the role of spiritual fathers, mentors, and those ahead can kill any potential. And the same with associating wrongly. In the name of Jesus, every good thing you have seen here or you are seen around in this ministry in our lives and anywhere that God is that you desire in your life it has become your reality in the name of Jesus Amen. number three enhancer is avoiding the lifestyle of strife and contention the lifestyle of strife and contention. Genesis chapter 13 and in verse 14. And the Lord said unto Abraham, after that Lot was separated from him, lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward. After that, Lot was separated. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give. Who was Lot? Genesis 13, the same 13 from verse 5. And Lot also which went with Abraham and had flocks and herds and tents. And the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together for their substance was great so that they could not dwell together. And there was strife. You can leave it there. Strife. Strife and contention takes the eyes off the vision. It takes the eyes off the vision. Takes the eyes off the future. Please note it as much as, as you can. And you can make it pointed for the sake of easy recall. First, strife and contention takes the eyes of the goal. Of the vision. Second, strife and contention redirects the thought. Redirects the thought and energy. To the object of strife. Your thought, your energy is redirected to the object of the strife. Third, to be 
drawn into strife or contention is to be drawn out of positive vision and profitable action. Again, to be drawn out of, to be drawn into strife and contention is to be drawn out of positive vision and profitable action. Anybody inviting you into strife, inviting you into contention, is inviting you out of vision and inviting you out of profitable action. At the end of it, you get preoccupied with a different vision. And different focus. And that becomes the focus of the, of the strife. You see, it was only after Abraham was separated from strifeful lot. From where we read. When Abraham was separated from strifeful lot. That he was able to see where God wanted him to see. So lift up your eyes. And see. Where I am sending you to. Listen to number four. You need your mind. To plan the future. Sorry. To picture the future. Plan the future. And make decisions onto profitable action. You need your mind to picture the future, plan the future, and make decisions onto profitable action. You need the mind, one mind. You need that one mind. To, to picture your future, to plan the future, and to make decisions onto profitable action. Don't fill that one mind with strife. Don't fill that one mind with contention. Don't fill that one mind with unhealthy competition. Strife, com contention, unhealthy competition. The only thing that that will produce is frustration and stagnation. Somebody say amen. Am I going to number five? No. The point's about strife. All right. Now, why must you not strive? Let me go to another, another level. Why must you avoid strife and contention? First, you can strive and contend to the point where your sole purpose for existence is to prove the enemy wrong. That's a waste. You can strive and contend to the point where your sole purpose for living is to prove to them that they are wrong. That's a waste of life. To prove the enemy wrong. Secondly, you can strive and contend. That is, you are quarreling with this person. You don't greet them. You don't, you are just full of bitterness. You can strive and contend secondly to the point where your sole purpose of existence is to outdo the shine or impress the enemy. Your sole purpose of existence will be to outdo, to deshine, 
or impress the enemy. Let me just impress them. Let them know what I can do too. And at that point, you are no longer pursuing what God wants you to pursue with your life. At that point, you are pursuing what strife wants you to pursue. You are no longer pursuing what God wants you to pursue with your life. You are pursuing what strife wants you to pursue. At that point, you may end up living a life to make impression instead of living your life to give expression to your potentials. There are those who are trying to make impression and there are those the only thing they want to do is to give expression to their life's potentials. Why must you not strive? Number three. You cannot, you, are, you, you, you must not allow strife because to strive with people is to sacrifice excellence. To strive with people, you cannot excel in life. If all you use your life to do is to strive with people, those of you who enjoy quarrel, well done. You enjoy, this one is my enemy. That one is my enemy. Everyone is your enemy. Well done. You don't know what you are doing to your life. God's servant Bishop Yereko said, those who strive for excellence don't strive with people. The temptation to strive will always arrive. What do I mean? People will always look for your trouble. People will always hate you without a cause. People will hate you because you are fine. People will hate you because of where you came from. People will hate you in fact because you are alive. And there are those who will hate you for no reason. What did that person do against you? I just don't like him. I just don't like her. And if you follow the hatred of people, they will only invite you to a fight you are not meant to fight. Let them go. Face God. When you reach where God wants you to reach in life, you can answer them later. Hey! Look at your neighbor, say, face God. Don't try to prove anything. Just face God. And let God take you to your place of destiny. You are moving this way. There are those. No, okay. Come, come, let me demonstrate something. Just turn this way. Don't be coming from that side. Anywhere, anywhere I turn, turn that way. Look at me and this man now. Gradually, don't move too fast. I want you to, 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 to. Is these people have vowed to counteract you, to antagonize you, to undermine you, in fact, to camouflage you, just make up your mind. Hey! Like the Bible. 
Bible say concerning Jesus, he passing through the midst of them. He went his way. I don't have the time for you. I don't have, I don't have the time for quarrel. I don't have the time for enmity. I don't have the I don't have your time right now. You see, I, I you are looking for a fight, go to the motor park. I I am too busy with life. I am too busy with results. I am too busy to make it a mark in my generation. I don't have the time for quarrel. You greet them, they refuse to answer one. You greet them two, they refuse to answer. If you want, you can try it a third time. They refuse to answer. Next time, walk your way. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is confirmed. You greeted them once, twice, thrice. It is confirmed that they are not interested in greeting. Don't waste your words. In fact, avoid, avoid their root so you don't depress yourself. You don't hate them. You just want to protect your heart. Just avoid their root. Love them from your heart and from afar. And whatever brings you into contact with their vicinity, avoid it. So take this 5,000 naira with your big head. Take this 3,000 naira with your fat nose. And you are still receiving the money and receiving the insult to hell with the money. Somebody say, Amen. I see a new day for somebody here. Number four, reason why you must avoid strife is very serious. Take your seat. Number four. To allow strife and contention is to be disconnected from divine intervention. You are saying you can fight your battle yourself. Is to be disconnected from divine intervention. The only intervention you can get is de demonic intervention. That's what scripture said in James chapter 3 verse 16. Anywhere strife is allowed, evil is at, is at work. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. The only person working where there is strife is devil. Devil. Somebody say it loud, amen. As much as possible, free your mind. Look at your neighbor, say free your mind. Say free your mind. Free your mind. To reason clearly. And to face your future. And to fulfill your destiny. Free your mind. Somebody say, wanted to marry you, refused to marry you. Free your mind. Somebody lied against you, accused you. Free your mind. Somebody's looking for your trouble all the time. Just free your mind. Face your future. There's so much work to do. When Nelson Mandela came out of prison, 27 years, Robin Island, people asked him, they said, and he has become president. What will you do about those who put you in prison? All those who fought you, all those who accused you, they, they are still there, and you are now the president. What, do you, what will you do about them? Are you bitter? He answered one word. He said, bitter? There is no time to be bitter. There is work to do. Verbatim. Bitter? There is no time to be bitter. There is work to do. So if you don't have work to do, go ahead and be bitter. If you don't have anything to do with your life, go ahead and be, be in, in enmity and contention. If you don't have where you are going with your life, go ahead and let everybody be your, 
enemy. But if you have what you are going, where you are going in life, there is no time to be bitter. Bitter, that's the full, that's the full quote. Bitter, there is no time to be bitter. There is work to do. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Can I ask you a question? How many of you, at any time you were typing a message like a text message and there was something on your mind or you, you had just talked to somebody and then suddenly what, what was on your mind or what you just talking just entered the text to another person until you read it and you realize no, no, no. This does not belong to this person. And in fact, you have accidentally sent some text to some people until you, I'm so sorry it is a wrong, it sent in error. <laughs> that is how powerful the mind is. What fills your mind escapes into your life. It overflows in your life. That is why you must ensure that it is filled with profitable things, valuable things, destiny matters, things about your future, how you will expand the kingdom, how you will impact your generation, how you will make your mark, how you will pursue God the more. Fill your mind with those and the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Finally this morning, how do I enhance my life's vision? Number one, four, maintaining the climate of joy and praise. Maintaining the climate of joy and praise. The climate of joy, the climate of praise. It's a booster of the life of vision. Joyful people, excited people. I've seen many men of vision. They are joyful or joyous. They are excited. And there are four things that you will understand that that does for you. Number one, joy facilitates the ministry of the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Romans 14, 17. Joy facilitates the ministry of the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost is, a, is the architect of dreams and visions. Real kingdom dreams and visions. Joel chapter 2 verse 28. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Dream dreams. Old men dream dreams. Young men see visions. Joy activates, facilitates the ministry of the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is the architect of dreams and visions. When you are Holy Ghost filled, you dream big. You, you see things ahead. Secondly, joy and praise connects the heart of man to the frequency of inspiration. It connects the heart, it connects the mind to the frequency of inspiration. With joy shall you draw waters from the wells of salvation. Isaiah chapter 12 and in verse 3. The joyous person, the joyful person is always inspired. Excited person, praiseful person, inspired. In 2 Kings chapter 3 and in verse 15, when there was a need for prophecy or for the word of the Lord, Elisha said, bring me now a minstrel. And as the minstrel played, the hand of the Lord came upon him. Hallelujah. 
Thirdly, joy and strength. Sorry, joy and praise impart strength and energy. And you need strength and energy to run with the vision. Joy and praise impart strength and energy. The joy of the Lord shall be your strength. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. And the vision is for an appointed time that he may run that read at it. When you are a man full of joy, when you are a woman full of praise, you are full of energy, you are full of strength. With that energy, with that strength, you are able to run with the vision. Hallelujah. Anybody about to run with the vision, shout the Lord and say amen. And finally, number four, joy and praise confirms and boosts our faith. And faith is needed to fulfill the vision. Joy and praise confirms and boosts our faith. Those who believe his word sing his praise. Psalm 106 verse 12. They believe his words, they sang his praise. First Peter chapter 1 verse 8. Whom having not seen you love and whom though now you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. When you believe, your joy is unspeakable. Somebody say amen. And all, and and the, and the, and the, Boost your faith and your faith is needed for the vision. In verse 2, he say, write the vision, make it plain. That he may run that read at it. Verse 3, and even though he tarries, wait for it. It will surely come. And then verse 4, the just shall live by his faith. You see? So your joy boosts your faith and your faith assists in the fulfillment of your vision. Now, the opposite is true. When you are depressed, you disconnect the activity of the Holy Ghost. And so, it is impossible to access vision. When you are depressed, you are deprived of inspiration. When you are depressed, you are deprived of energy. Sleep tired, wake up tired. When you are depressed, it's a confirmation that your faith is not alive. Because you need to be in doubt of God and in doubt of his word. To be depressed and be discouraged. But today is a new day for somebody. If you are the one, say loud, Amen. You want your vision to be enhanced, the right association, the right inspiration, avoid strife and contention, and walk in the realm of joy and praise, and it shall be done. Somebody say amen. I believe that somebody was blessed here today. Every vision that God has placed in your heart, I declare they shall come to pass. Amen. Say that amen like you are a believer. Amen. A louder believer say amen. amen. Will you jump on your feet with a louder shout of amen? amen. We are going to take a little time to celebrate and rejoice. But before we do that, Yes, go ahead and celebrate and give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. I announce today in the name of Jesus, God will help you to fulfill.